Well, I'm proud to be an entertainer. I'm proud of what that, you know, role is. I, you know, there's times that I can be very cynical and just think I'm just an actor. Who cares? <laughs> you know what I mean? But when I think about this movie going out into the world in this trying time, it's like I'm happy to be an entertainer. I'm happy to kind of participate in the cultural dialogue in that in that way. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Lee Pace is an actor. He sat down with me in New York City to talk about the work. Do you have a series of preparation steps that you do that has evolved over your whole career that now you know, okay, this is what I need to do now to just prepare for the role? Well, I very rarely find myself playing a role that I'm not interested in. And it's not to say that it hasn't happened because it has happened, but I only now kind of find myself playing roles that I'm really interested in. So it is the beginning of my favorite part of playing a role, which is the research, you know, and whether, you know, the character that I played in Driven was a real man. So there was a ton of research to do Um, or, you know, when I played fictional characters in the past, like. Joe McMillan or even Ned with Pushing Daisies, it's like there's always, you have to inspire yourself. You have to figure out ways to get your mind excited and into a different place. So I, I think that those for the, the, that that period of time is always, it's the most private part of it, but mm-hmm. it's the most interesting mm-hmm. because you're really with yourself and the character yeah. for the only time that will be the case. Right. Because soon when you get on set, on set, you're going to have other influences on the character. You're going to have the other actors. You're going to have the director. But in that chunk of time when you're, you know, riding your bike around the city or doing, you know, your errands during the day, you're going to be thinking about the scenes and the characters and layering in the impressions you've gotten from the research that you've done the little memories of your own life or things you've observed in life that are applicable to the character. It's just the only time that that work is private. And I, it doesn't really feel like these days, like there's like a specific process to it for me. Um, it's just, I'm interested in it and I'm trying and I'm wanting to let my mind go in whatever direction it wants to go to gather all of the different little impressions and tools that I'm going to need. The idea that this is the only time where it's just you alone with the character, it makes me think like th- this is that, that's why it's really important because you're laying a foundation that only you can lay. Bec- and if you don't lay that foundation through what you're talking about, even just thinking about it or other influences can, can corrupt the, uh, mm-hmm. the, the flow of it. Like I didn't think it, never thought of it like. And that. it's definitely like, uh, you know, I you do lots of you know trying different, because I also play a lot of characters that are very different than who I am, so I end up trying out new physicalities or ways of saying things, trying to understand the accent better, or you know letting that dialect work fit inside my mouth. So I try it out in lots of different ways that are really probably embarrassing and it's probably better if no one does see them (laughs) but like with John DeLorean I wanted to talk more like him I didn't want to replicate his voice but I wanted to understand his cadence and the way he tried to make sense of things Um, there also seems to be a way you move as him like in that first scene like you you just have a have a a a way you you commanded your presence yeah well that's I mean but I think a lot of that is just that stuff you do when you're like rehearsing alone with stuff um because that's where you i mean you're going to throw out 90 percent of it anyway Mm -hmm. you know there's no you don't want to get too hard and fast or at least i wouldn't want to be inflexible about choices at that point you just kind of want to try a lot of different stuff on i do anyway that's just the way my mind works in lots of different directions. You mean that's so, because, because the director is going to change things there or the, cert- the environment's going to be changed because of where you are? That's what you mean by 90% of it gets thrown out? Like you, you don't want to be... Ho- I, yeah, I don't want to feel like I've got to do it this way or yeah. it's the only way I can possibly do it because it's, 
you know, filmmaking is such a collaborative thing. And I, you know, I've, I've, I have felt on set, I don't know how to do it any other way than this way that I've rehearsed it. And I don't like to be in that yeah. position. And I don't, I don't think it's fair to the director or the other actors really to kind of be too fixed on what your point of view is. Um, it's just not that role on set. Mm-hmm. You know, there's lots of, there are roles. I think, I think a writer, you know, if, if they've got the conviction of what they've written should be very fixed as this is what, this is what's written and figure out a way to put it in your mouth, you yeah. know? Yeah. But I, th- I don't know. I, I, I like to feel not fixed and flexible about yeah. things because it's, it more replicates life than when you're actually doing it. Yeah. It feels like that in yeah. a way. It's yeah. more, I mean, basically what I do is help the director tell their story. That's all, that's all I have to do, you know? And I want to give, I want to make that my, my job in a way. But to do that, I think it, I would like to be flexible so that I'm able to help them understand their story better and be inspired by their story in a new way. Because you only get that chance once on set when you're there to shoot the scene. You just get the opportunity once when the cameras are yeah, set up. Yeah. You know, you don't want to try to recreate something you did in your bathroom mirror. That's not a good look. You said something once about a bit of direction. And uh, and the way you said it was this, uh, about Barry Sonnenfeld. You said, he gave me great notes. Notes that I think about to this day. When I heard that, I leaned in, because I was like, what is this going to be? And then you said, the note was, do everything you're doing, but do it faster. It's the best note. Okay, tell me why that's the best note. Because some of the, some people I've talked to, they're like, they, they've made fun of that exact note. I just think, I mean, I'll just speak as an audience member now. I feel like every most of the things that I watch, I'm just like, yeah, I know. Get to it. Just get to it. Yeah, I see. You're feeling bad. If you're, you know what I mean. Just get to you it. You'd like to have like a button where you can make the, them speak faster. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no. It's just like I just yeah. I feel like it's I think it's a contemporary acting thing yeah. to kind of milk your moment or make it or you feel as though you have. And I know I I. I the reason Barry gave me that note is because I was I needed it at the time. Mm-hmm. I felt as though I needed to show the audience certain steps yeah. of my work. You know, it's like showing your math teacher yes. that you understand it, as opposed to trusting that you've done that work and just say what you mean to say. Yeah. People speak fast in life. They don't feel like they need to make every color of every sentence, you know, illuminated with some kind of, you know, mm-hmm. point of view. It's such a good, it just gets you out of your own way, that note. I give it to myself all the time. And I, I tell you where really, you really feel that note is when you're on stage, mm. you know, because it's, it's, you have to just get to it. Yeah. So that, this is an example of how that you're saying that worked for you at that time. And it works for you to continue. You keep giving yourself that note. This is a note that somebody gave to you at that time that really helped you. And you keep, and it keeps helping you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like somebody else might take that note and be like, that is, that is very, I, I don't know what that, that's not, there's, there's no, this is a results oriented. But I'm sure it is, but it isn't, you know what I mean? And I don't mind a results oriented note. Some people communicate in that way. That's fine. You just have to decode what they're trying to, what, what how you have to mm. take on that thing. You know, not everyone is going to communicate to you in your language, but you still have to understand what you need to understand to do the scene that you That's need to really do. That's really important. It That's benefits really important. you to understand what they have in mind, not to get caught up on the language that they use. Right. But like with, right. That's good. But, but with like Barry's note, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's just, it was, he wanted it fast, quite frankly, because he didn't, he was like, I was like, because I'm sure I argued with him, because I can be very argumentative. I was like, yeah, but don't you see all the acting I'm doing? Don't you want to, don't you want to, don't you want to move in tighter because of all this great acting? He's like, no, I'm going to do it again, and you're going to say it faster, because it forces a cut. Oh. If you talk slow, the only way that they're going to be oh, able to speed wow, up the scene is by cutting to the other person, and then speeding up your dialogue. So if they're going to need to speed up the scene, they're going to have to cut. They're going to have to cut into it. Boy, you t- say that to an actor. Watch them speak fast. 
<laughs> Watch how fast they'll go. Um, Never thought of that. I but it's like, but that was technically what he needed. But I want him to have what he needs. Right. To, I want to know that information so that I have what I need to do. Give him what he needs to make it as good as it can it can be. But I mean, like I said, there's no cuts on stage. But even more so, it's like you're in charge of your own pacing and better to just get to it. Yes. Mean everything you say, but get get to the point. Say what you think, what you need yes. to say. I had the actor Damon Harriman on a couple weeks ago. He plays uh, Manson in um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. He was talking about how Tarantino did something where he showed him the what he wanted by like this body language thing i'm not describing this right he basically said all right so damn you're going to come over here and manson comes and he started using his body tarantino started using his body and then i saw an interview that you did where you were describing spielberg yeah he did that doing that with on on lincoln yeah like and he and and you said you came in, you saw him. I, I find this fascinating because I haven't heard of this. In a way, he showed you how he wanted it done without yeah, saying. He just, I guess he's, I, don't, I could try to deconstruct what he was thinking, but he, the truth was he understood what, he, what the movie he was making is. He understood the, what the, how the character functioned in the movie, and this is kind of where his creativity went. So, And he was, you know, and so I kind of took it from there. And because he... I, I felt like such a freedom on that set with him to play that character big and be performative with that character. Um, and it was, I mean, that was a really a, a cool experience just because that whole room was full of a bunch of actors, like all of the different congressmen from different yeah. parts of the States. They'd all researched from Doris Kern Goodwin's book, you know, I, okay, I'm a, I'm a Republican from Maine. This is my point of view. I'm a so it's like you had this like room full of scene partners that was just alive in it. But yeah, Spielberg. Yeah, he gave me just like a little bit of physicality, and I had worked on the, those lines. Um, I'd under you know I've done a lot of it was such fascinating research to do on that movie. So it's like kind of on set. All you need to begin with is like a little bit of inspiration. Yeah, and you don't know. Yeah, it's almost like a physical line reading, like just just a way that he is showing you without actually telling you. Yeah, I mean, you kind of see what they're what they have in mind, and sometimes the best way to communicate is is not like tiptoeing around an actor and using the different actor, you know, words that yeah. there are to use. And it, you know, it's sometimes I don't mind a line reading. I just kind of want to understand what the point of view is, because then I can figure out if it works or not yeah do you know what i mean and i'll try anything but i want to feel good about i, f I want to feel good about what i've done before we move on yeah you know yes when you think about the best work you've done or when you feel like you were able to give everything to the work when you think about that can you extract the dna of the situation like meaning what mattered there what was it the environment was it what the director was or wasn't doing was it how prepared you were and do you try do you try to re recompose that dna in other situations well i mean as the actor on on the set you really don't it's not really your job to recreate or do anything. It's kind of to be responsive to yeah. a situation. So I think the most important thing is casting. It's like what it comes down to is if I've been well cast in something, then it works out better than when I'm not well cast in something. And I don't think I've always, you know, I am proud of everything I've done, but there are times that I feel like that character, it was, that was, it was good casting. You know, because I'm always going to bring the level of work that I've got to it. Um, I don't know. I, I, Is I don't, it on you to, to choose or not choose something? Like absolutely. Me? Yeah. Like, absolutely. What, if, what if everybody's saying, you're right for this, Lee, you're, and you're thinking, I'm, I'm not. But everybody, all your trusted But there's people. always these different other reasons to do jobs. 
you know, money, to, you know, to work with, you know, this director that everyone says you should work with, and you're reading the character and going, I don't get it. Like, I don't get this. You know what I mean? And then the movie comes out and you're like, see? Like, yeah. why didn't I why didn't I listen to my instincts? I mean, I guess I'm older now and I kind of trust my point of view when it comes to that. Like, I just don't, I can't find my, I, the idea of doing something I don't really get excited about and feel like I can do my best work in is just not going to be appealing to me. But I, you know, I wish I'd had that when I was younger, you know, I probably, you know, I don't think there's many situations like that. Um, But yeah, there's definitely been times when I've been like, I didn't understand that character and I did it anyway, and I probably shouldn't have. I audited an acting class last night. A student there said to the teacher, um... I was so nervous right before the scene that I didn't even know what the scene that I was doing was anymore. That's how nervous I was. Is there anything you can tell me? And the teacher said, ah, don't worry about it. It's true. No one cares how you feel. <laughs> really. What? Like actors think that their emotions are super important and they're not. Do you know who else feels that way? Toddlers. You know, they're not. It's like a part of what... No one cares how you felt when you did it. It's yeah. not important. What's important is the story, the scene. But wait. I loved hearing you talk about how horrible of a time it was for you to do Angels in America. Mm-hmm. You were not saying it's fun. You were saying this is not fun. Mm-hmm. This is, I'm, I'm nervous every night. I'm, I'm terrified. Terrified. You were using the word terrified. No, and, and people were laughing and everyone, and you were laughing kind of. And I was like, this is good to hear because a lot of people are like, this is, this is, this could be the peak thing. You're in our great play of our generation, mm-hmm. but you're still able to say this is not acting can be not fun and it's okay. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's, I mean, you can't, ex- if, I mean. I, I mean, I, I look, if people want to have fun acting, then that's 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 there's definitely possibilities. I've had so much fun doing this job. It wasn't during Angels in America that I had a good time, but it was the I'm. It was such a privilege to be a part of, and I learned so much about myself and about being on stage, and about the work that I do playing that role. But it was that role is. I mean, to to walk really walk in Joe Pitt's shoes is gonna fucking hurt yeah that's just the way that one's gonna go and i don't and i i didn't know to the extent that it would hurt going into it so every night i would get out on stage i guess you how could you really but every night it would start i would just get this not in my stomach it was nerves about all of the technical things that we had to think about during that play but also just the exposure of having to play that character's arc over the next eight hours yeah that um it gives me chills now even now to think about you know the experience of doing that of repeating that painful painful story um and you know in your in my mind i would do all of these acrobatic well you know joe ends the play much better off than he began the play he's doing that impossibly hard thing of realizing who he is shedding his skin and dealing with you know the realities of his life which it's going to hurt everyone around him it's going to you know, leave him naked and afraid in the cold, but he'll be better off for doing it because you have to do it. You have to do it. You have to change. And I would do that in my, I think, oh, well, he's going to be better off. You know, it's going to be, so everything's going to be all happy. It's going to be okay at the end. I even could even, you know, write these stories of, uh, you know, after this, Joe's going to be live happily on the beach, you know, renting surfboards to people and get as far away from New York and Roy Cohn as he could possibly go and Mormons and everything. But who knows if that's even true? Who It doesn't matter. 
it doesn't matter any of that stuff because the play is the the thing and it's yeah. gonna hurt because it's a good play yeah. and life hurts sometimes and i'm still decoding what that experience was i have serious judgments against the marvel films like i'm i'm a snob i haven't i've tried to watch some of them i failed to watch them i i have such a, a judgment against them that i was starting to think i want to start to um 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 shame actors who are doing them like that that, that was my that was are my you starting thoughts. with me <laughs> and i and just today just today i put on the panel that you were doing at seattle comic-con and i started watching it and I was laughing. I was almost falling off my chair, laughing at the people. And I was showing my wife, and I was like, this is like a Saturday Night Live episode. And then, about a half hour later, I was hoping my wife wasn't coming back in the room because I was on the verge of tears with these people. These people were so genuine. Th th these movies moved them so much. Mm -hmm. They were up there, and some of these people were wanted to be actors. And the, the way they were asking the questions, man, I'm going to cry right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was, I, it was like a transformative thing. Like I didn't, I don't, I don't associate with people that are so moved by these movies mm -hmm. and just to see them. And I'm like, oh my God, like these movies are doing something. Of course, it's the number one movie of all time. One of these movies, but for you to have, to be able to play Joe Pitt and move people like this and the normal heart, you're looking in the audience, you're seeing mm -hmm. these people being moved that, that live through, through these times. And then you are you're also moving these young people and they're 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 taken into another world through your performances in this thing do you have you take take an assessment of this and are you like wow this is well yeah no i'm proud to be an entertainer i'm proud of what that you know role is i you know there's times that i can be very cynical and just think i'm just an actor who cares <laughs> you know what i mean and but like, for example, when we did uh, Driven down in Puerto Rico, uh, we uh, right before we, were, we started shooting, Hurricane Irma came through and was so destructive. We did five days, and then Hurricane Maria just mm -hmm. was insanely destructive. I've never seen anything like it in my life. We all got evacuated, and I thought the movie was going to be was just toast. I didn't think we were going to be able to come back and finish it. I didn't know what was going to happen to it. But the Puerto Rican crew was, you know, wanted to get back and finish it um we wanted to get back and finish it and we did and i guess i look we're the hard thing on that movie was just getting the logistics of it done like getting people to set getting people with you know enough ice and you know fuel for their generators at their houses getting you know people food to bring home to their neighbor who is you know elderly and can't get food or you know it just like all of the different Dealing with the aftermath of the hurricane, all of that was so complicated. The good stuff was doing the scenes and making everyone, when it gets quiet on set, and you know, me and Jason are <laughs> talking about how to set up a Coke deal for to save a car company. It takes on a sense of humor and lightness that everyone in that room watches. And when I think about this movie going out into the world in this trying time, it's like, I'm happy to be an entertainer. I'm happy to kind of participate in the cultural dialogue in that, in that way. Lee Pace, thank you. Hope hey, we could do this again. I hope so. Thank you very much for talking to me. I really enjoyed the interview. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of IFP, the Independent Filmmaker Project. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs>